Hey Robot Makers! Do you want to know how to communicate between two Raspberry Pi Picos, this is the non-Wi-Fi version, using UART? Then keep watching! Now whether this is a Pico LiPo to Arduino Nano RP2040, a Tiny 2040 a Hazard Feather, Arduino Nano, ESP32, ESP8266, BBC Microbit, Teensy, an Arduino Uno, a P Moroni 2040, Remos D1 Mini or Adafruit Circuit Python, then it's the same process. So to show you how this works, I've got two Raspberry Pi Picos set up here. I've got a Pico Explorer and I've also got the RGB keypad. And they're both running standard MicroPython. So to wire this up, we need to connect GPIO0, which is the RX pin on the first Pico, to the GPIO1, which is the TX pin on the second Pico. We also need to make sure the ground on both of the Picos are connected together so we don't get any spurious data. So to show you how this is going to work, I've got two Raspberry Pi Picos. This one is running on my Mac. So this one is connected to my Raspberry Pi 400, which is on my desk as well. And I've got two programs called Picocoms A and Picocoms B. So let's have a look at Picocoms A. So over here on my Mac, and we can see I've created a library that's called EasyComs. This makes it really easy to connect two Picos together or any other device that's running MicroPython. So we're going to create a new COM port, we call it this COM1, and we just bring in that EasyComs library. We pass it the UART ID. So if you're using pin 0, pin 1 on a Raspberry Pi Pico, that's called UART 0. There are two UARTs on every Raspberry Pi Pico. I want to set the baud rate to 9600. You don't need to worry what that is. It's essentially the speed at which the two devices connect and it's measured in how many bits per second can be sent. We then start the EasyComs port and then we've got a little while true loop here. First of all, I'm going to set message to nothing. I'm going to empty the string. I'm then going to read in any data that sat there waiting to be read in from the UART port. So if the message is not none, as in there is some data waiting for us, we're going to print out whatever that is on the screen. So message received, and then this little squiggly brackets here means use that variable that's called message, and we're going to strip out the any new lines that are on the end of the line, and that's usually represented by the forward slash and n. And then we're going to sleep for one second. So if we run that program, let's just go over to here and run. It's not going to do anything just yet, but it will say send a message ahoy. So that's now been sent, waiting to be received. So we now go back over to the Raspberry Pi, and we now run comms b, which is the second one. This is pretty much the same program, but what this is going to do instead is it's going to have a count and it's going to say hello and then whatever the count number is. And then it's going to sleep for a second and then increment that count. So if I now run this program, you can see there it's going to send the message ahoy and then it's going to say hello zero, hello one, hello two. And it's going to keep counting up. Now if we go over to our Mac again, we can now see that we've received a message. Message received, hello one, hello two, hello three, and so on. So we can see both of them are speaking to each other. There's no extraneous rubbish there. It's just a text string that's been sent from one to another. Now this is actually surprisingly more complicated than you'd think to get working and this is why I've created this EasyComs program. So let's take a quick look at EasyComs and see how this works. The first couple of things are just setting some variables so whatever the UART ID is again it's either 0 or 1 depending on which pair of pins you use on your Pico. The baud rate which is 9600 that's a pretty standard baud rate you can go much higher than that this is quite a standard reliable connection and then the timeout this is how many milliseconds we're going to wait before we time out and we're not going to read any more data from the input buffer. So what happens between the two dev devices is we have one Pico is we have one Pico and it's going to send some messages over UART to the second Pico and it does it at one byte at a time and once those bytes have been received the input buffer on the second Pico will fill up and once we've got that new line at the end that slash n this Pico will then know that it's got all the data it needs and it can then display it to the screen. So that's what the timeout's for. I've then got a couple of functions on here so the init function just sets up the baud rates and the connections and so on so if the bot if there is a baud rate specified we'll set that and then we create a UART object so the UART is going to be whatever the UART ID is and then whatever the baud rate that we've set is and then we're just going to initialize that UART connection. We're then going to have a couple of different functions for sending and receiving data. The start function simply just sends the message ahoy and then it just prints that to the screen. That's just a very quick test to see if the handshaking is working between the two. The send message will just print out to the console what the message is that it's sending and it will also add to the message a new line just in case we haven't got that at the end and we will also then write out using the UART object as a byte array that's what this bytes does it converts string characters into a series of bytes and then it will then encode that message using something called utf8 so this is where it gets a little bit more complicated so a string of text in python isn't just a bunch of letters that those letters are encoded using a different technique uh, depending on what encoder we specify so that could be ascii which is the old american standard code for information interchange which one byte represents one character or it could be unicode like utf8 where one character is actually represented by two bytes 
bytes. So we want to represent it in the way that Python normally represents these things and then send that across the buffer. And then on the other end, as we receive this data, as we read it in, we've got to kind of unpick that data. So the first thing we need to do is just make sure that we don't have any problems with timeouts. So if we are reading the data in from the buffer and we don't receive a new line because of some problem, maybe it's disconnected or there's been a problem in the communication, then we want it to wait for about a second and then say that that's enough. Whatever is in the buffer, we're going to pass that back. So the way that we do that is we just capture what the current time is. And this is a number of milliseconds since the start of the epoch whenever the pico was turned on we're then going to capture that as the current time we're going to then say that there's a variable that's called new line and new line we're just going to set to false because we've not detected the new line yet and then whatever the message is we're just going to set this variable to empty to begin with and then while there isn't a new line or the current time is less than the start time plus the timeout still under that one second timeout then we're going to check and see if there's any data in the buffer so the way that we do this is we say uart.any and if uart.any is greater than zero as in there are some bytes in the buffer then we're going to read those bytes in we're going to read them into our message a message is going to equal whatever message was previously plus the data that we're reading in and we're going to decode that from the byte array that comes in from the buffer we're going to decode it back into utf8 so if, if things have been represented by two bytes previously they've been split out into one byte to, to get into the byte array we're then going to put them back into the correct format and reassemble our message if we detect the new line at the end of the message we're, we're going to say that new line equals true we've detected that this is the end of the line and then we're going to strip that new line off the message because we don't need it anymore and then we can return the message just realize that code at the bottom there will never actually get hit so let's uh, get rid of that we don't need that okay so what we need to do next then is just go and have a look at the next program so i've got a bunch of other programs as well on here so i have led client and led server so instead of just sending a message saying hello or whatever uh, this one will actually make the lights blink on and off but the way that it does it is quite interesting so let's go over to the the server program let me show you that so what we're going to do is we're going to have this command so this command here is a variable that's going to hold the dictionary of things. So we've got the first thing here, which is the first key and the key is called command and the value of that key is called blink. We've got a second key value pair, so arguments and on. So what we're going to do here is we're going to pass this and we're going to actually read it in as a JSON object. We're going to convert it in a second. So let's just set up our COM1 using the easy comms on ID 0 and 9600 again. We're going to bring in the LED. This is the onboard LED. So that's on pin 25 on the uh, on the non Pico W versions on the original ones and on the later ones I think you can put uh, instead of pin 25 just LED in uh, speech marks. So while truth this is going to run forever com1.send string and then we're going to make json dump string command so it's what it's going to do is it's going to convert this command which is actually a list structure into a json string and we're just going to make sure that it is definitely a string by putting string in front of that as well wrapping it within that so this next if statement check to see if the current command string that we've got if the arguments say on then we want to set the command to be the opposite of that so we want to say command blink but arguments are off we want to switch the light off otherwise make sure that the light is on then we're going to toggle the onboard led so if it was off it's going to be on if it's on if it's going to be off and so on and i'm going to sleep for a second so that's the server that's the one that's going to be issuing the commands and turning its own led on and off and then if we look on the client one this is the sort of receiver so this is going to do the same thing we're just going to set up com1 using the easy com we're going to bring in the onboard led using led because this is actually a raspberry pi pico w and it has the onboard led in a slightly different pin arrangement i think it's actually on the the Wi-Fi chip and what we're going to do now is we're going to read in into message one so if message one is not none so we've got some data in there we're going to print out that to the console and then what we're then going to try and do and the reason I've got try in here is if there's any problems with that data coming across and it isn't actually a proper JSON object it will throw an error so this, this is just to catch that so we say command equals JSON load string um, from the message and we're then, we're then going to print out what that looks like and if the command command is blink and then the argument is on then led comes on if it command arguments equal off then we're going to turn the led off i'm going to sleep for a tenth of a second if there's any problems if there's an exception we're going to capture that as the e and then we're going to print out what that error is to the console so let's run this one on here so this is going to be the server so let's run this server here there we go so it's sending messages on off every second now if we go back to the raspberry pi and we load up led client and we run this instead we can see now we're receiving the json messages and it's turning the leds on and off and we can see that on our overhead over here so we can see the led is flashing on and off 
and they're pretty much synchronized if you look at the led on here and the led on here they're pretty much flashing in real time you can see a very slight delay and that's a tenth of a second and these are all the different boards that we can connect using this exact same technique so this is really useful if you're connecting up say something like a motor 2040 board and you want to connect that up to a raspberry pi pico w so you can make it wireless or maybe you've got several different boards such as the servo 2040 the plasma 2040 and you want to connect them all together using a single pico then you can do that using uart and then bring in all the extra functionality that you wouldn't normally have on a pico so i hope you enjoyed the short video and i shall see you next time bye for now